deploying a smart contract. All right, so up until this point, we've learned a ton. We set up our MetaMask, we started coding the smart contract, we learned a lot about Solidity, and now we're gonna see how we can actually deploy the smart contract, not on this virtual machine on our browser, but instead on a test network, or if you like to, on the real Ethereum network. Now, to start off, the first thing that we'll need is the MetaMask account. So I hope you got that set in place. And then we do not want to deploy to Ethereum or the actual main network. We want to first deploy this to our test network. Now, there are two options here, Gurley test network or Sepolia. I'm going to go for Sepolia, although I don't have any Sepolia test ether yet. So we need to go and get that from a faucet. Of course, there are many different ways that you can get Sepolia test ether. Uh, just simply do a Google search and use a trusted supplier. You know, you don't want to just connect to anything. So I'm going to try and use this Alchemy uh, one, but please just be cautious here wherever you get your Sepolia. It requires us to log in, so I'm going to do that and uh, then request my test ether. Now that I'm logged in, what I am going to do is simply go to my MetaMask and click here to copy the address of the account I want the Sepolia Ether to be sent to. I'm going to paste it in here and then verify that I'm not a bot and click on Send Me Ether. So here it says uh, you can now donate and all these exciting stuff. This looks a bit scary to be honest, um, but hopefully this worked. So let's go ahead and see. It is not being, oh, there it is. So there we have the 0.5 Sepolia Ether. And that should be more than enough to do uh, our test. Now, the next steps is exactly the same if you deploy on a test network or the real main network. So let me show you. Let's clean this up. I'm going to just get rid of all the previous deployed contracts, make sure that I'm happy with my contract. And then very important, Depending on what network you are going to deploy, make sure that you are on the network. So if it's the main network, you should be on Ethereum and you should have some Ethereum. If it's Ethereum's test network, either one of these will work. Gurley is uh, going to be discontinued. So um, I am going to go for the Sepolia. So I'm on the Sepolia test network. I have got some test Ether. The next thing we want to do is change our environment to say injected MetaMask. This will go ahead and pick up our address like you see and the amount of ether that we have. Perfect. For the next step, make sure that you are on etherscan's correct network. So in my case, I'm on the sepolia.etherscan.io. Remember for the main network, it's purely just etherscan.io. So Depending on which network you deploy to, you need to kind of track your contract on that network. We are going to be on the Sepolia one. Let's go back to Remix. And now it's a simple case of clicking deploy. Make sure that you have the correct contract and hit deploy. This will now ask us to sign the MetaMask transaction, which we are going to say continue. And then we simply have to wait for the deployment to take place. As you can see, we now have a successful deployment. It even shows up here. So this is the actual contract that's now live on this Sepolia network and there's our address. We can also see that the block accepted this. And if we click on view on Etherscan over here, this should take us to the Sepolia network. However, if you don't want to do it that way, we can simply copy this address over here as well go to the network and just simply search for our contract. And there it is. So this should now be our contract, but we don't see kind of the contract. If we click here, the actual functions, because it is not a verified contract yet. So there's two ways of verifying your contract. You can either go through the process here on Etherscan, which is a bit more involved. And I do have videos on that. Um, but this means you need to copy your files and do certain checks. Now, with Remix, there's a new plugin available that we can make this uh, easy for us to verify. So to make use of this plugin, we can go down here to our plugin section. And if we go and look 
at the search bar, we can just type in verify. And here is Etherscan contract verification. Let's activate this and now you should see a new icon. So we can click on this icon. So the next thing that we'll need is the API key from our Etherscan account. Now where do we get that? Well, we can go to the etherscan.io's website, not the test network one, and click on sign in or create an account. Now you need to create an account, it is completely free, but once you have done that, just log in. Once you are logged in, what you could do is head over to your profile and then here at the API keys, you should see your keys here. If you don't, you can just simply add a new one, give it a name, and this is how it will look. I'm gonna simply copy my API key and I will be removing these keys, so don't try and use these keys, please. Um, I'm going to paste it in there and then click on save. Now that the key is saved and this all happened on the settings panel over here, we can now go to home. And this is where we're going to verify our contract. Now it's very simple. What we'll need is the actual contract's address, which we can get here. And uh, we could also just get it from our deployment. So we're going to enter the contract's address down there and we're going to select what contract this was. Here we add the hex code of our constructor arguments if we had some in our initial deployment, but we didn't have any because we have coded the prices and stuff in our constructor here. But I will show you how we can actually get this hex code at the end of this video. For now, I'm simply gonna click on verify contract. And now if we go back to our contract on the Sapolia network and we kind of refresh this page, hopefully our contract would be verified. And we can see that is the case because there's this check mark and we can actually see the code that we have written. And on top of that, we also get to uh, read from the contract over here and we can read uh, or do some read operations and here we can see our functions and we can also do some write uh, functions as well. And right as we have deployed our contract, the rain outside is pouring, so I hope you enjoy the ambiance. But let's see how we can read from our contract by going to the read tab. And we don't need to connect to our Web3 wallet for this. We could see the cost, uh, we could get the cost, we could see who's the owner, and we can do all these read transactions without connecting. Now, something that's nice, if we click on this cost, we can actually see the value in Way and Gway and also in Ether, which is a nice conversion table so that you don't have to do that manually. We could also see the order count, which is currently at zero. So let's go ahead and actually place an order by going to the right contract section. And this time we do need to connect. So let's click on connect Web3 wallet, MetaMask, and now we are connected. You might be asked by MetaMask to sign a transaction, but now make sure that it's green and we see our wallet address. Then let's click on place order. And here we get to enter amount in Ether of what we need to pay for our pizza. So if we go back to our conversion table to see what the current price is, we could see that 0.001 Ether is required. So we're gonna enter that over here. And then we can simply click on write. If we do so, then MetaMask will pop up and tell us how much we need to pay and the little gas fee. Let's click on continue. Now it says view your transaction. Now we don't need to view it over here. What we could do is actually go just copy our contract address and maybe just open another tab, search for our contract. And when we look at our contract, we can actually see there we created the contract and here we actually kicked off uh, the order, place order. Now what's interesting is that if we go to events, we can actually see the place order event that we created. So that's working as well. Wonderful. Now if we go back and we go to the read contract section, uh, here we can now go and check the orders and indeed we have one order that's on our contract. And that is how simple it is to deploy your contract, verify it, and start interacting with your contract on the network. Now, before we end off this video, what would have happened if you had some constructor arguments? For example, 
let's say that we wanted to have a uint and this would be our new cost that we wanted to pass in the initial contract and we would have passed the new cost in here like so this would have meant that if we go to our deployment which we can now remove if i were to select my pizza you could see that deploying needs to kind of take in the integer value so i'm just going to take in the way as like a, a random amount doesn't really matter for now i'm going to click on deploy and again i would have said continue this time we would have waited and i can click view on etherscan and here we get to see the actual transaction so we could click on more and then here's the input data that actually created um, the contract so what we could do is then go to the very last line and copy everything up until all this padding you see where the zeros start padding here at the very end i know there's zeros here too but just take it from the last one and then where the zeros start take all of that copy it then we're going to head back to our pizza place we're going to paste the hex code in there now remember that this contract has a different address so we need to replace that address it is the same contract so that's fine and then i can now simply click on verify my contract so technically now if we go to etherscan and we search for the address we need to give it a second but here you can see um, it's been verified too and there we have it ladies and gentlemen if you have completed this course up until now i want you to tap yourself on the shoulder because you have done it you have persisted and you've learned alongside with me now this is not the end of your learning journey these are just the beginning concepts to get you comfortable to writing solidity code and understanding the ethereum network now of course there are more advanced topics to cover such as abi encoding calls delegate calls and much more especially security risks such as re-entry and those kind of security things that you need to consider when you are going to deploy code to production however what you have learned in the course will make you feel comfortable when you look at solidity smart contracts and try and attempt to follow along with my other tutorials on this youtube channel i want to see how this course does and if there is a lot of demand then i'm going to make the advanced section too and this is all dependent on yourself if you are someone that really enjoyed this course then consider for the first time to make that effort and subscribe to my channel comment on the videos tell me what you loved about the course and how it helped you it really helps me the youtube algorithm to share this course with millions of people and then you can be assured that you'll see me for the next advanced series so uh, go off to greatness enjoy your learning journey and remember that the Solidity documentation is your friend. Go through it, learn these concepts, practice, 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 and in no time, you'll become an expert. Have a fantastic day.